Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to, to build on the, the Chairman's comments about the challenges that we have had in predicting the threats that we will face and the kinds of wars that we will fight. Uh, and add to that that we, we also seem to be challenged in predicting the consequences of our military interventions, whether they are in Iraq, uh, uh, Libya, more recently. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, uh, General Stewart and General Mayville and, and Mr. Chandler, um, how those challenges in the past inform how we approach military interventions going forward and the potential threats that those interventions will generate. I was trying to rack my brain for the quote about how difficult prediction is, but I couldn't come up with it. Uh, but it. But it's hard work, and the environment continues to change, even as you make forecasts about what you think will happen. So it's, uh, it is a very dynamic environment uh, that, especially now, has so many variables and so many second and third, or, third order effects. The challenge, I think, and we, we talked about this with my team recently, uh, we are all very interested in the current fight. And so there's an incredible demand from us to talk about what's going on in Syria, and, and, and all those things are important, but it peels away capability to look to the future. And so how we think about uh, how we divide up uh, the, the, the challenges from the current fight and allow organizations like DIA to really look deep to think about what the world looks like four or five years from now is one of the great challenges that I think I will face as the director because the insatiable demand for current intelligence robs us of the ability to look a little bit deeper and think about the second and third order uh, effects of our current actions. So we're going to try to do this a little bit better going forward. I can't promise you that we'll get it all right, but hopefully we won't get it all wrong going forward. General Mayville, let, let me ask an additional question before you respond. Um, Mr. Scott mentioned uh, some of the vacuums our, our interventions unintentionally create. Um, some of the problems that we're fighting today, uh, you can correlate to previous actions, uh, military and otherwise, and decisions that we've made. How, how would you, how are you approaching um, those second and third order uh, consequences in arming uh, moderate opposition forces in Syria, potentially sending uh, weapons and aid to uh, Ukraine? The, uh, the training and equipping of moderate Syrian opposition groups fits within a broader counter missile strategy. And in that strategy, uh, it's Iraq first, finding a partner. Uh, by that, a political partner, not just uh, Iraqi security forces, but a political partner uh, that we can work with. Um, while we do that, we want to take initial steps to allow uh, Syrian opposition groups to defend themselves against ISIL, and we're just on the beginnings of that. Um, there'll be some bumps in the road. I think there'll be um, some challenges as we move forward. I think the initial pace will be very deliberate, um, the, maybe even the first numbers not uh, particularly high, but I think there will be a certain amount of momentum. And I think as that evolves, um, we go back and look at where we are with the uh, work we are doing to get the government of Iraq and its military back up on its feet to look at the next phase. And I think you will find that the thinking on that is how do these two lines of operation complement each other. With regards to the, um, uh, the Ukraine, I think first we have got to recognize that what Russia is doing uh, in the Ukraine first and foremost represents a challenge to NATO, and we are members of NATO, and we want to look at how um, we can support NATO. We want to look at uh, responding to this within the context of NATO. What is most important for us is that we maintain um, our ability to meet our Article 5 responsibilities. We will not allow that to be held at risk, and we need to look at um, what we can do to stiffen um, uh, the confidence in us as a partner as well as to assure our allies, specifically um, to the um, what we can do in Ukraine, I think we need to look at a wider menu of options 
and explore that. Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm out of time, but what I'm really interested in knowing uh, for the future is what potential threats are we generating by interventions in these two areas, Syria and, and Ukraine. But I'll, I'll come back to you and maybe for the record uh, get your response. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Bryden.